Next year, for the first time, the Pentagon will spend more money fighting the war in Afghanistan than in Iraq. The government plans to spend $65 billion to raise troop levels in Afghanistan to 68,000. But soldiers in the Washington's Army National Guard are still fighting the war in Iraq. I recently spent two weeks embedded with the 161 and went along on two missions outside the perimeter of Joint Base Balad. Tonight, we wrap up our series assignment in Iraq with the second of those missions, a nighttime convoy. <laughs> PFC Logan Brack of Moses Lake is loading up a box of chem lights, glow sticks to be tossed from the lead vehicle to mark suspicious items along the road. On some missions, Brack will load up five boxes. We'll only need one tonight. This is Brack's first tour of duty, but not his first mission. He's been on more than a dozen patrols outside the wire in Iraq. I always heard stories it's like, you go outside the wire, it's almost guaranteed you're going to get hit. Now it's just kind of like, really? Make no mistake, the threat, while increasingly unlikely, still exists. They do a spray and pray. They, uh, they believe that Allah will guide their bullets into the bodies of their enemies. They don't aim. Second platoon's objective is escorting a convoy to a smaller base to resupply coalition forces with food, water, fuel, whatever they need, all under the cover of darkness. With more than 7,000 miles behind the wheel, Specialist Vanessa Grimm of Ritzville has the utmost confidence will avoid any real danger of injury. The fact that it's like almost three tons of just straight armor going 60, 65 miles per hour and uh, with all the lights and, and some of these even have sirens on them, um, it can be pretty uh, intimidating. Before we leave, the soldiers gather for a pre-mission prayer. We pray in your name. Amen. Have a good mission. Thank you, Take care. Now that the platoon is all set, we head toward the gate to meet up with the supply vehicles. My gunner Rebel takes a camera to give us a view from atop our vehicle. The journey takes incredible coordination and planning to safely escort semis through hostile territory. All in a day's work for our soldiers. This is my first official nighttime convoy mission. I'm inside an MRAP, a mine resistant armored protected vehicle. Our trip from JBB to Forward Operating Base Warhorse should take anywhere from 90 minutes to two hours. But only an hour into the ride, one of the supply vehicles breaks down. We wait parked alongside the road for a good hour before moving on. Me feeling like a sitting duck, but the crew calm, but growing impatient. It ends up taking longer for the supply vehicles to unload than it takes getting to the base. Total time round trip, about seven hours. We arrive back at Joint Base Balad just as the sun begins to rise. It took us a little bit of time to get down there, but we made it a uh, successful mission overall. Nobody got hurt, everybody got back safe. So, But the mission wasn't without its drama. There were some fireworks. Just after midnight, PFC Brack got a surprise. <laughs> it's like, whoa, I got shot at. I did remember hearing talk over the headset about tracer fire. Even saw a few flashes in the sky. Turns out we took on some ground fire. An individual with AK-47 popped off around 12 to 15 rounds in my general direction. I heard the buzzing of the rounds, all that other kind of fun stuff. It's pretty interesting. Tracers and all. Quite the calm response considering it was his first time being shot at. It was pretty obvious what was going on? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's a very distinct sound when you're getting shot at. Apparently. But apparently not enough to face PFC Brack at least not in front of his fellow soldiers.